For any competitive Pokemon players out there, I need you to think about what the best Pokemon might have been over the entire course of Sword and Shield. Now, if you're a VGC player, your mind probably goes to Fluttermane and then Iron Hands, but one of the very close Pokemon after that is a particular Ground and Flying type that has an incredible offensive ability, a really strong set of offensive stats, and an amazing offensive move pool. That's right, we're talking about Landorus, but today's Landorus is not the one you're thinking of. Instead, the new top dog for Landorus forms is actually Landorus Incarnate, which proves to be a monster in VGC Regulation F, and today we're going to be using a team showing it off. With a wonderful Tailwind offense team built around a very unlikely duo, will we be able to get some wins and make our way towards Master Ball? Hopefully you guys enjoy this type of content, and if you do, of course, leave a like and subscribe for more. And with that said, let's show off this team that I actually got sent thanks to my Discord, which will be linked down below in case you guys want to send me teams yourselves. I'm going to try and bring back a lot more Battle Spot content, but of course, that does mean that if you want to see daily regulation f battle stadium i do need teams so if you guys have any rentals pace whatever just drop them below in either description or preferably in the discord so i can keep them a bit organized and i'd love to go over your guys's teams in future videos with that said though let's start off with the star of the show everyone's favorite vgc pokemon in Sinor. With a particular moveset of Fake Out, Flare Blitz, Parting Shot, and Knock Off, this is just the VGC staple for Incineroar right now. With the Terra Water typing, it helps a lot against common Pokemon in the tier, allowing you to shave off weaknesses to stuff like Ground and Fighting, and instead just have a really good defensive typing with Intimidate. The Citrus Berry is just a great item in Incineroar. You can go for Safety Goggles, but Amoongus usage is down. I'm going to guess it's not going to be permanent though, so if you use this team like a month or so and Amoongus starts spiking again, you can definitely swap this to Safety Goggles, but Citrus Berry is just such a nice item to have. I personally always love this thing. Overall, this is a great pivot and allows us to bring in one of our best cleaners in the team, none other than Booster Speed Fluttermane, with Shadow Ball, Dazzling Gleam, Moonblast, and Protect. This performs the job of a cleaner to a very high degree, and it should be creeping anything that will be creeping like right around that Roaring Moon mark, allowing us to get a really strong fast Dazzling Gleam off with our Terra Theory, and Overall, this should be a really good option to hit both opponents at the same time, and it partners actually really nicely with Landorus too, because a lot of Pokemon that might take on any sort of Fluttermane hits, such as Steel types, you can pretty easily bully with Landorus. There's only one that I could even think of that might put pressure on us, which would be something like a Corviknight, but otherwise, I can't really think of any typing that actually checks the two of them going for the Fairy and Ground Stab respectively. Speaking of Landorus though, we do have a Protect, Sludge Bomb, Earth Power, and Sand Seer Storm Landorus. This is Life Orb's Sheer Force and Terra Poison. The Terra Poison is just a phenomenal option since it allows us to boost our Sludge Bomb damage even further, making sure that we can combat Pokemon like Rillaboom with significant ease in comparison. No longer having to take a neutral grassy glide from a Pokemon that otherwise has high priority, we can now adjust the field position and make sure that we can take advantage of it pretty comfortably. This proves to be a very great threat, but it wouldn't be as good if it wasn't for the fact that we have our own Rillaboom to partner with this, allowing us to take on a lot of common ground types that will now revenge us. With Fake Out, Grassy Glide, Woodhammer, and U-Turn, this provides us a really good Assault Vest pivot, with Terra Poison in this case more so being able to help it check Pokemon like Fluttermane and Chiwa as a duo, allowing it a really good roll as a nice pivot that can cycle in and out of Incineroar and Landorus for really good momentum. Now one of the best partners for the Incineroar and Rillaboom combination of all time is none other than Urshivu Rapid Strike. And with this Mystic Water set with Surging Strikes, Close Combat, Aqua Jet, and Detect, this proves to be a very good monster and it's going to give our team a lot more of a much needed physical boost to our offense, giving us a really good wall breaker that doesn't mind Incineroar Intimidate. Overall, Urshivu is an amazing partner for this and it benefits a lot from these Tailwind type of comps, which I did mention earlier was the focus of this team. Now we've seen five Pokemon, and four of them are really standard, but Landorus, at least to the casual viewer, might seem a little bit weird considering it's an incarnate form. And despite this being a very high profile Pokemon right now, really the weirdest pick of this team actually comes from none other than our Tailwind setter, which is going to be Latias. Now Latias, just like Landorus, is a Pokemon that actually rose to prevalence thanks to the Regulation F format, and it's a really good Rocky Helmet user as a nice check to Urshifu Rapid. With Mist Ball, we're able to weaken opposing special attackers such as Landorus Incarnate, Fluttermane, etc. And with our Terra Poison, we now have a complete immunity to wall out most Landorus Incarnates, as well as the fact that we have a really good defensive typing, and thanks to Levitate, we now have a great ground check overall in this team. With Ice Beam, this should also help with offensively pressuring Landorus, but it's also great for Pokemon like Rillaboom in the tier. And then Tailwind and Recover are great to just give some really good support and sustain health on Latias as much as possible. If you guys want to try this team out yourselves, the link to it is going to be in the description below as well as the rental code on screen here. And with that said, let's get right into the battles. Alright, and we're here today with a team built around Landorus Incarnate. Should be a pretty fun one overall. Our first match of the day is against Regidrago, Sinistra, Salamence, Iron Boulder, Chiyu, and Urshifu. 
Now I'm gonna assume this is probably your Shifu Rapid. Your Shifu Rapid would complement this team very well. It gives a nice fire water grass core. They can do some stuff. Uh, I think that my lead here is probably gonna be, if I had to guess, I feel like Latias actually is a really good lead. I know they have dual dragon, but at the same time though, I can definitely tear it into some like poison to handle that. And in tandem with a fake out option such as probably Rillaboom, I feel confident that we can get off some really good just overall damage early on with this. Uh, I could lead off with Landorus as well, but I think instead I would rather back... Actually, no, I think I would rather lead off with Landorus and Rillaboom. Backland Latias is a nice switch in here. And then for the final Mon, I do feel confident actually in going with our own... Uh, either our own or Shifu or our Fluttermane. I'm actually going to go with Fluttermane. I do like the idea of having our Shifu here. I think it's objectively a really good Pokemon. Uh, however, at the same time, once we clear through there, our Shifu, my Fluttermane actually does a lot of damage against my opponent's team with that them going for Terra. And realistically, the only thing I do need to fear is that Urshifu because it has a really strong Aqua Jet that potentially could end up getting some good pressure on me. So I'm just going to try and lean into this damage as much as possible. They're going to lead off with Dual Dragon. Uh, that's perfectly fine, actually. I'm going to go for the Fake Out into Salamence since I'm anticipating that my opponent... I should go for Fake Out into Reggie Drago and then just Earth Power that spot as well. Uh, my opponent will probably just go for something on that Salamence, most likely Tailwind, if not like a Hurricane. And I'm kind of fine with either way. I just want to take out Reggie Drago here. So we'll go for Earth Power. Uh, that should be a really strong attack into this. And then we'll get some nice damage overall. They actually protect, which means that they're not Choice Scarf, which means this turn was overall very well spent. Okay, never mind. That means they're both not Choice Scarf, which my Landorus outpaces both anyway, which only makes us that much better. Now I can definitely U-turn pretty safely with my Rillaboom here. I think I'll U-turn into the Reggie Drago just to get a little bit more chip with that Pokemon because Dragon Energy is going to be just kind of deadly against my team. So I'd rather not really take any chances here. But I am going to U-turn to try and get back my fake-out momentum. And then we're going to go for a nice Earth Power into Reggie Drago this turn. This should be a really strong attack, and it will probably do around like 40 to 60% if I had to guess. Oh, wow. Okay, so that did a lot more. I know Reggie Drago has a lot of health, so I, so I kind of assumed this might have been a little bit stronger of an attack. But I guess I overestimated how strong this would be. Now, I do have a really safe switch in, thankfully, because with my Rillaboom's U-turn, I can actually safely bring in my Fluttermane. Which my Fluttermane, because this is not a Scarf Reggie Drago, it will actually guarantee I'll pace it. Meaning that I can claim a nice KO into that spot very comfortably. I will have to switch out my Landorus though, or I could maybe go for Sludge Bomb. Either way, I think it's definitely at least a good pick here nonetheless. To keep alive for future turns, because I will need it for a Pokemon like Chiyu offensively speaking. Um, I could switch Harden to Latias here and try and set up a Tailwind on the following turn. Uh, though Salamence might just go for a Draco into that spot anyway. I think definitively though, I am going to go for Dazzling Gleam this turn, and I think I'm actually going to go for a Sludge Bomb and try and call those elements maybe switching out here. No, they're going to go for Helping Hand, which means that they're not anticipating my Fluttermane to outpace this. I'm very okay with that. Oh no, they're going to go for Draco Meteor, so that means they do actually outpace. That must mean that my Fluttermane is not creeping on Drago. Uh, definitely good to know. That's going to be helpful for future games actually, but I'm kind of okay with the exchange either way, because we'll still be able to pick off two threats, and Landorus already did a ton of damage opening up. It stopped Reggie Drago from beating my Rillaboom, and I'm kind of okay with that alone. Now, I am kind of curious what my opponent will bring in next. I do think I have to actually go into Rillaboom here, because Rillaboom will give me a nice opener into the Urshifu, and I can get off something like a nice Grassy Glide while switching out my Fluttermane into Latias, which I think will be a much better defensive play this turn. I could also even potentially just keep my Fluttermane in and go for like a Fake Out plus Dazzling Gleam, though I do anticipate Salamence and Urshifu to go for Protect, so I'm actually, I'm actually going to lean into that, yeah. I'll go for a fake out into Urshifu, let Salamence do whatever it wants. If it goes for protect, fine. Uh, and then if it doesn't, that's fine too. Because at the very least, they're stalling out their own tailwind this way. And I can then switch into Fluttermane on the following turn. Well, the out of the Fluttermane into Latias on the following turn. And that should still be perfectly fine. Also, then I can make sure that Urshifu is just taking more damage unnecessarily. Instead of revealing it now on a very obvious protect turn. So I think that'll work out better for us. So we'll bring in the Latias now over Fluttermane. I don't need to keep the booster speed alive, frankly, because unless if Chiyu or Iron Boulder are booster speed, it doesn't matter. And even if Chiyu has like a choice scarf to try and boost that speed, it has to lock into a move, which it can't comfortably do against my team. Meanwhile, if that ends up being something that the, if it ends up being something like the booster speed on the Iron Boulder, I'm kind of okay with that as well. Now I am going to proceed to switch out with a, actually no, I'm going to go for a Grassy Glide here just into the Urshifu. I'll just get my damage because that'll hopefully help a lot with a future turn. Salamence will most likely target my Rillaboom, and I'm kind of okay with that, because it's a nice excuse to bring back in my Fluttermane before they'll boost up anything. Uh, meanwhile, this Urshifu is going to have to take a nice Grassy Glide, which does a little over half, and that's already really huge for us. 
Thankfully, they didn't predict the Latias coming in. So if they went for Surging Tricks this turn to try and claim a kill, they're now going to lose their Urshifu entirely, which means my Rillaboom was actually kind of useless from this point on. So overall, again, really great position for us because we now have Latias and Rillaboom on the field, which I think is a much stronger endgame core than leaving it up to something like Fluttermane because I can now put a lot of pressure on Salamence to have to go for a Tailwind or even just to stay in when it doesn't have it up more so and then just get a nice Ice Beam to KO it. So my opponent can't regain that speed advantage with the Pokemon such as Chiyu or Iron Boulder here, unless of their booster. And Iron Boulder still has to fear a Grassy Glide anyway if it came. Uh, meanwhile, Sinistra could have came. Nope, it seems like it's Chiyu anyway. Okay. I was going to say Sinistra could have came technically, but it doesn't really matter. Now, I will say that I think it's in my best interest actually to just go for the Terra Poison on here. Uh, the logic... Actually, hold on. What's my Rillaboom's Terra typing again? Let me just go for Ice Beam really quickly in the Salamence first. I do want to double check that. Uh, we are also Terra Poison. Okay, then yeah. It is definitely in my best interest to Terra the Latias in the off chance that Chiyu is Scarf, just to try and take this hit as well as possible. I'll U-turn on the Chiyu as well, just to be safe. Uh, I do anticipate that Chiyu is either Scarf or Specs most likely. It could be Charcoal to be fair, it could be AV. It could be a lot of sets. I'm anticipating Scarf or Specs. They're usually Scarf or Specs. Uh, safety goggles has kind of fallen off since Regulation C and my goal here is just to try and get rid of my weakness because the Scarf Chiu I don't think will kill Terra Poison. I don't know the Calc offhand, but I can't imagine this is Terra Dark, so we can have a way to boost that further. And even if I trade Latias here just to kill a Salamence so Chiu doesn't gain a speed advantage against me again, I'm kind of okay with this. So Chiu is going to Terra. That's perfectly fine. Terra Fire should hopefully weaken its ability to take on hits from Shadow Ball Fluttermane. And meanwhile, our Salamence is going to be KO'd now, which is great. Chiu might be going for Heat Wave here. Perfectly understandable if it does. I can still get off a really good Shadow Ball into this Pokemon nonetheless in the following turn. So I'm kind of okay with that. We will, however, lose both of Oh no, we're not going to lose Latias. Okay, well then my opponent actually made a very big mistake here. Because while they were able to boost up their fire attacks, it wasn't even enough to kill a non-Dragon type Latias. Which means I can actually get off a really strong Mist Ball here as well, and we can use attacks even further. So even if for some reason Fluttermane plus Latias cannot claim a KO here, Chiyu cannot kill either anyway. Well, it'll kill Latias, but it won't kill Fluttermane. So I'll get off a Shadow Ball and a Mist Ball if they don't forfeit this turn, and that should hopefully help us with winning the game, guaranteed. Shadow Ball should be able to, if I had to guess, do around 50%, 60%. Yeah, 50%, that sounds about right. Meanwhile, Mist Ball will probably do around like 20, 30. Oh no, that actually crits, okay. Well, I'm gonna assume the crit mattered there, but at the same time, again, with minus one, they were not killing my Fluttermane, and I could have revenged it off anyway. So. Solid first game, showing off why, again, this Latias is a really good piece here. And let's get into another match. We're going to do one more for today. All right, so for our final battle of the day, we're taking on Blake, whose team consists of Corviknight, Gardevoir, Hydra Steam Walking Wake. I don't know why I called it Hydra Steam Walking Wake, but it's now Hydra Steam Walking Wake. I don't make the rules. Uh, Hearthflame Ogre Pond, Amoongus, and Fluttermane. Definitely an interesting team. I do like the option of having Corviknight as a nice Tailwind option here, and it will most likely be something such as Terra Dragon. Uh, Gardevoir could be a nice option overall, just as a backup response to Fluttermane. And with Psychic Noise as well, this actually could be kind of a decent threat for things like Amoongus too. And it's a good theory they can handle both. So I do like having Gardevoir here. It even gives the team a soft trigger mode if really need be for something like Hearthflame, Gardevoir, and Corviknight if they really wanted to. Uh, but overall, this should be a match I actually feel confident in winning. The um, Incineroar here actually does a lot of work, as does the Urshifu. Uh, so I think I'll probably lean into something like that. But first, I'll probably go with Incineroar on lead. It's a nice Intimidate response, and even if my opponent is Mirror Armor Corviknight, I'm not too concerned. And I'll probably partner that up with most likely the Landorus, as Landorus is a really good breaker early on, and even if I trade it pretty early, I can get off a really strong set of damage immediately. I'm going to bring the... I think I'll probably bring the Urshifu in the back for sure, and I think that my last mod is actually going to be Latias. Latias will hopefully help with dealing damage to Pokemon like Amoongus, and if we can force it to Terra, then the Rillaboom plus, uh, not the Rillaboom, the Urshifu plus the Landers can probably take it out. Or honestly, the Landers can probably just take it out anyway. This should be a pretty decent match. Uh, Amoongus could be a little threatening, I'll be honest. Uh, maybe bringing Rillaboom as a nice option for Terra Water would have been preferred. But I also don't know if they'll bring Amoongus here, in all honesty. I think it's probably backseated among these six, as well as something like Gardevoir. They're going to bring Walking Wake and uh, Walking Wake and Fluttermane. That, that makes a lot of sense as a lead, in all honesty. Two really good options. One of these will probably be Booster Energy. I'm going to fake out the wake either way because it's the only thing that actually puts pressure on Landorus. Uh, okay, so they're actually not on either Pokemon. That's actually good to know. I'm going to go for the fake out into wake here. And then I'm going to go for the sludge bomb into Fluttermane. I could burn Terra Poison immediately, but I don't feel like that's in my best interest. I think instead Berserk, my Terra will hopefully go a lot further in the long run. Now, I will say I don't know if I actually need it to kill Fluttermane, but I'd rather not have to burn this unnecessarily. 
Uh, see, now we know at the very least that Fluttermane is three at KOing with Gleam, which is actually really important information. Um, what I'm going to proceed to do here is I am going to go switch out of Incineroar, and I'm going to go right into... Ooh, actually, I don't have a great switch in here. I'm going to Parting Shot, and if they kill my Incineroar, that's fine. It's a nice turn to pivot. And I'm going to Parting Shot into that Walking Wake spot, actually. I think Walking Wake will be a better candidate for that. Meanwhile, I'm going to go for a Protector with Landers this turn. That should help a lot with just trying to avoid dying to something like the Hydra Steam plus Gleam combination here. I'm anticipating a Protect from... No, actually, they're not going to go for Protection either, Mon. Very fine. Gleam is going to go off here. It'll deal some nice damage to Incineroar. And as long as they don't Hydra Steam the Incineroar, we're actually pretty good. Even if they do Hydra Steam Incineroar, though, it wasn't worthy enough of getting my Terra here. So I'm kind of okay with this. And it should overall just be a nice piece on my team. They're going to go for Hydra Steam into the Incineroar. Okay, so actually it doesn't die. Now that's very good information. We did not lose Incineroar to Hydra Steam, which just fucking broken Pokemon. Truly broken Pokemon. Uh, we now walk, we can walk in Wake though. It is now just kind of crawling, crawling Critter, if I had to guess. I don't know. I feel like that's a good option. Uh, no, maybe crawling Crest because it's something that like still with the ocean. Uh, we're going to regardless though, probably bring in my Latias. I think Latias might actually get my Terra first uh, because Latias can get us a nice speed advantage here with my Landorus. And I think I'll actually even go as far as switching Outlanders this turn, just to guarantee this turn goes off. Because when I go for Tailwind now, I can actually now sack my Incineroar, which has kind of served its purpose, and it will guarantee die to Fluttermane going for Dazzling Gleam. Meanwhile, with my Latias, even if Walking Wake does outpace us, it's going to have to go for something like a Hydra Steam or a Draco Meteor here, which neither of those should kill, especially at minus one, in tandem with the Fluttermane going for Dazzling Gleam as well. This should be actually a really strong turn for us, where we can now regain the speed advantage, and bring back in laners when Incineroar dies very quickly, and then start going for actual KOs here with Sansir. Which has Sansir Storm is gonna go crazy momentarily. Not only this, but we'll be able to spam Mist Ball Latias actually very comfortably against my opponent's team, making sure this Terra Poison is going to actually be very crucial to our game win right here. If they don't kill Incineroar for some reason, I'll probably just go for knockoff or parting shot even. Most likely knock off into the walking wake and then just go for Mist Ball into it because I don't really deem Flutterman a threat against this combination of Pokemon, and I would actually like it to survive, because as we see right here, it's an easy way to lose in Sonora, which means that I bring in Landers quicker. So, now I'm curious about what Walking Wake will click. It's probably Draco Meteor. No, it's Sunny Day. Now, Sunny Day is an interesting click. I do like the Manual Sun here, because I don't have an immediate way to set it, and Manual Sun is always a really nice way to regain some field position here. We do see that Flutterman is special attack boosting, and Walking Wake will probably be speed boosting because of the drops, Either way, that's very fine, because my Landorus should comfortably outpace. It is a max speed Landorus, and my Latias should also outpace, because again, we're dealing with plus two speed versus plus one. Uh, it's no Iron Bundle, so I'm not really too concerned with this, frankly. Um, but yeah, at this point, I think what I'll actually do, I'm going to go for the... So I'm definitely going to go for... So I could actually just try target the Fluttermane with the Sludge Bomb here and just guarantee my KO. And I can meanwhile go for a Mist Ball into the Walking Wake and weaken it. My main concern, though, is the fact that Walking Wake will get a boost from the... It'll get a boost from the fact that it has the sun up. I don't really think it's something I can avoid, unfortunately, but I think what I'll do, I'm going to go for a Mist Ball here into the Walking Wake, and I'm going to go for a Protect here. Fluttermane is most likely choice to buy, I guess, uh, and that's why they've been spamming Gleam. Not that it's a super restricted move here, but we'll kind of find out this turn because they'll probably click Gleam again if they're choice, and otherwise they probably won't. Mist Ball will at least walk, weaken Walking Wakey further. This should definitely put it in Sansir range very comfortably, and I could probably pick it off on the following turn with Sansir plus Mist Ball into the Fluttermane and just KO both Pokemon. Uh, so we're going to see Fluttermane going for Shadow Ball actually into Latias. I'm still kind of okay with that, uh, because Latias will take some good damage from this, but it still has a lot of health left overall. We're going to go for a Mist Ball into Fluttermane here, and I'm going to go for a nice Sansir Storm, which should target both these Pokemon very well. Uh, Fluttermane will obviously take this hit a lot better than the Sludge Bomb in particular because it's not a single target move. But with the Sansir getting a nice ground stab as well as the fact that it's a higher base power move, it should hopefully make up for some of that missing damage. And I think the combination of these again should hopefully comfortably kill both of these Pokemon here. I'm curious if they'll actually try and switch around this because I feel like this is a very free turn for them to switch. Especially at a Walking Wake which is now at minus 2 special attack. Uh, they're actually going to go for Protect on Fluttermane which is very interesting but very good play for them as well. Uh, meanwhile, the Latias is going to get a strong Mist Ball here, which unfortunately is now protected against, but it's kind of fine because I could pick off the Fluttermane on the following turn. Shouldn't be a huge deal. They don't have a Pokemon to bring in that should disrupt this. Meanwhile, Walking Wake is now dropped, which is actually huge for my Landorus. Uh, the Fluttermane can definitely still comfortably be picked off because even if my opponent does proceed to go for something such as a Protect to try and stall out my T, 
Tailwind. Not too concerned with that because there's not a Pokemon they could bring that would disrupt this from actually working anyway. They're going to bring in the Ogre Pond here. I'm kind of okay with that because, again, just like with the Walking Wake, I can comfortably go for Sandseer here. Uh, now, I believe we only have one turn of Tailwind. Yeah, we have one turn of Tailwind. Meanwhile, two turns of Sun. I'm still kind of fine with this. Uh, we're going to go for a Mist Ball into the Fluttermane yet again. And I'm going to go for a Sandseer Storm here and try and pick off the Ogre Pond and the Fluttermane. They can't really tear out the Ogre Pond, thankfully. So I do actually think that instead they're going to probably... Yep, they're going to go for Follow Me. Uh, I thought they were going to go for a, an Ivy Cudgel, to be fair, but Follow Me works too. The goal is probably just to try and keep Fluttermane alive, uh, which is totally fair. Landorus can still at least get off some really good damage to both these Pokemon, so I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, unfortunately, we don't hit the Fluttermane, but I do still have pieces that can pick that off later, so I'm not too concerned. Uh, now, I will say that we're in a little bit of a pickle here, because if Fluttermane does kill my Latias... Okay, yeah, so we need to go for a dual Detect, uh, detect Press Protect combination, I should say, to stall this last turn of Sun. Now, if Walking Wake is a Heat Rock set, I'm a little bit more concerned because Fluttermane has some okay natural bulk when invested. And I don't know if Aqua Jet with the Sun up will kill. However, if we can at least clear the Sun on this turn, I feel very confident in this KO with Aqua Jet here. So we're going to bring in Urshifu Rapid this turn. Meanwhile, my opponent's last Pokemon is going to be Corviknight. Now, this is huge, actually, because my opponent has not revealed Terra. However, I'm not too concerned with the fact that they could go for Terra because while Corviknight will absolutely wall through my Landorus, at the very least, pre-Terra. It's actually a hard wall to it. Um, I'm not too concerned with the damage that it might do to Urshifu, because I can hopefully just go for Surgic Strikes into that. Now, I kind of hope that my opponent just burns a really bad Terra here, because this otherwise could maybe be game. Um, but I don't have a lot that can stop that, sadly. They're going to go for Dazzling Clean here. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to have to just kind of take that, because I can't risk losing my Landorus. Because I need, I need at least something for Corviknight to kind of just maybe lose. Oh, never mind. They're going to go for Drill Pack. I was going to say, I need Corviknight to hopefully lose to Brave Bird Recoil as a win con. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to happen. And they do seem to be Heat Rock. Okay, that's actually a really bad scenario because I might unfortunately lose now. Um, I have to go for the Aqua Jet anyway into Fluttermane because I don't know how slow it is. And then meanwhile, I'm going to go for Sludge Bomb just in case if, let's say, my Landorus lives and my Shifu doesn't for some reason, which honestly could very well happen. Um, unfortunately, we do not really deal much damage, and Fluttermane will probably claim these KOs here. Uh, very good match, honestly. This is a really cool team, and I'm definitely glad that we got to cover it. It's still 1-1 one one for the day, and I still think we got a good example of just how the team can do. And unfortunately, Corviknight was a really good Landers check. I kind of hope that we can see more of it in the series, because Landers Incarnate is an all-time high, and it literally takes Corviknight to check it. Like, that's the only Pokemon I can think of that is a viable option to take on both those attacks, other than maybe Latios. Um, but the issue with Latias is that a lot of teams are prepping for Latias now. No one's really prepping for Corviknight. Like, this team's Corviknight check was quite literally Urshifu, which risks with Helmet. And then, otherwise, we had Incineroar, which Incineroar could have very easily been taken advantage of by Dare Dragon. So, I'm interested to see if Corviknight will get some more success, especially like a Mirror Armor set against Incineroar to try and drop its offenses. Would have been really terrifying here. Uh, but regardless, if you want to try the team yourselves, the rental is going to be in the description as well as the team as well if you want to try it on showdown and if you guys enjoy this content and want to see more of it like and subscribe consider becoming a member today for just a couple dollars a month you get some nice bonus content and you get to of course vote on special videos for you guys which we're gonna have our poll going up actually yesterday so make sure you guys stay tuned for that our current channel members of course are gonna be none other than mia uh josh aka ultra player zeke zero rao sakura obo johannes b endless gadgets Incog M and Vincent Wee, who is a bigger fan. Of course, thank you guys very much for your added support on the channel. And with that said, I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Until then, peace out, guys.